Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on smart water solutions. I'm Rebecca Kemp, editor of Future Constructor and Architect magazine and Public Sector Build Journal. Today, I will be joined by Carl Wolf from Xylem Europe and Paul Winnett from Xylem Water Solutions UK, who will be disclosing some industry methods to solve architects and specifiers water challenges. By way of introduction, and for those who may be unaware, Xylem is an industry leader in water solutions driven by smart technology and digitization. They support projects from planning and construction through to operation, and sustainability really is at the heart of the company. They offer a range of solutions for water supply and boosting, treatment, HVAC, firefighting, waste and stormwater, and the list goes on. Um, so our first speaker today will be Carl Wolf, Market Manager of Building Services at Island Europe. Carl, do you want to pop on and say hello? Yeah. <laughs> and and our second speaker. Oh, hi, Carl. <laughs> and our second speaker is um, Paul Winnett um, from Asylum Water Solutions. Um, he's general manager for building services. Paul, do you want to hop on and say hello? Yeah. Hello. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> So um, Carl actually joined the company in 2012 as a product manager for high pressure water pumps in the water utilities, industrial and build services, global markets. And Paul um, has been with the company for over 30 years in the building services and industrial business. Um, so there's a little bit of background information on our speakers. And um, before I hand you over, I'll just add there will be a, an opportunity at the end of the session to address any questions that are asked throughout the webinar. So there's a little sidebar to your right if you're working on a desktop and um, you can type in any questions you may have um, and for mobile users it is slightly different so you just swipe left to ask any questions and swipe right to return back to the presentation and um, all the messages are private so feel free to ask any questions you like um, and there will also be two multiple choice polls that we'd like you to get involved with they'll be posted again on the right hand bar and that will be throughout Carl's presentation. Um, so we look forward to hearing your feedback on these as well. So that's enough from me. Um, I'd like to hand you over to Carl now. Um, I'm gonna switch off my camera. So Carl, you're now in full control. Body to our today's webinar. Uh, so let's jump into the topics and let's start with the first question. Yeah? And uh, our first question is talking about how do you future proof and protect your buildings? And to answer these questions, uh, I want to, to go a little bit deeper inside of the question to identify what means future proof and uh, what do we want to protect in our building. So, future proof. Um, we have already a situation that was before COVID where we had an aging infrastructure, more and more um, houses and buildings are getting old. In UK, for example, the, the renovation market is approximately 36% of the entire construction market. This is a fairly low number compared to Europe because in Europe we have values up to 78% and most of the European countries, the construction market is above 50% in renovation. So in UK, we have a fairly low amount, but still 35%. Yeah? of um, renovation, which is caused by aging infrastructure. We have, of course, population growth and more and more of these people are coming to the to the city. So we have a rapid urbanization. I think this is well known. Um, we need also to identify how this is impacting our buildings. And this is really easy explained because we also have a kind of an indoor generation coming up. Um, saying this, that means that uh, in the future, uh, six out of 10 people will live in the cities. Yeah? And uh, the interesting or even more interesting part of that is that they will spend 21 hours a day indoors. That means they are spending their time inside of buildings, at home, in offices, in a factory, in the shopping malls, in the cinema, in a gym. I will not be in a gym, but I should be. Um, hopefully not in the hospital. But there are a lot of people and most of them will spend the time inside. So that means when we talk about water, what Xylem is doing, because we want to make a healthy world with healthy water, we need to uh, 
try to impact the, the, the impact water inside of the buildings because we are, uh, yeah, we are contaminating water, treating water uh, inside of the building. We're using it there we, and uh, we need to pump it from there back uh, to the nature. So it's really essential for uh, green buildings and for a green future to stay smart and to have smart solutions how to operate water inside of the buildings. Yeah, next to that, um, we know we have also climate change. Yeah? This is uh, requiring more and more HVAC. We know that HVAC is uh, requir requiring up to 50% of energy of a building. So that means we need efficient and smart uh, HVAC solutions uh, to run these buildings and the HVAC systems economically and environmental friendly. And digitalization, I think one of the core topics and we have seen here a dramatic boost in the last weeks months yeah this was already before COVID but COVID accelerated that we see we are now in webinars we are going more and more digital and um, looking on statistics the construction market is the least developed market in terms of digitization that means there's a huge potential for uh, increasing the effectiveness optimizing um, processes with digitalization along the complete uh, life cycle of a building in the planning phase, in the construction phase, in the operation maintenance phase, everywhere. Digitalization is here to help us all, all supply chain members in this uh, process to optimize buildings. And if you want to create future-proof buildings, we want, of course, or need to, um, to see how do we um, how do we uh, solve these challenges of the future? And with COVID nineteen, which I put here in the center of the slide, yeah, it was impacted. Yeah? Uh, we see that uh, uh, there were market uh, trends to home offices, where more and more people will stay at home from work. That means we have a reduction of um, the demand of office buildings or offices itself. Yeah. Uh, we also see already uh, um, statistics that this will, on the one hand, decrease the office demand, but on the other hand, it will increase the water demand because when more people are at home, you do more central, you do more activities decentralized. That means you cook at home, you do much more at home, which simply use more water. Yeah? So, looking on that, um, there's a huge, uh, yeah, challenges coming up, and COVID is accelerating that. We also need to take care that our hospitals and our core um, assets are running during such situations as now. And the water is essential to run these buildings because without water in the building, yeah, we cannot really live inside of that. So future proof means simply take that challenges that we have now, take that how this accelerated by COVID and uh, improve the buildings. And when we talk about what is our building and what we like to improve, um, of course, inside of the building, we want to have employee comfort, all the people that needs to stay inside of this building, even if it's an office or a school, university, whatever, we want to feel comfortable inside. So we need to have the right temperature in summer and in winter. Uh, environmental friendly, we know we want to uh, reduce our water and energy footprint to a minimum. Yeah? We, of course, need to work and now more effective, effectiveness with labor. So operating the building or maintaining the equipment needs to be uh, with as less effort as possible that we can work effectively with, with the people. And especially now with the COVID situation, we know we want to reduce also people being uh, on the spot and being maybe able to contaminate it by by issues on site so we want also to reduce the movement of people yeah? so and there are you know, when it comes to uh, service and maintenance uh, opportunities some really interesting technologies how we can improve this of course we also like, like to protect our building yeah? so when we talk about water we want of course to uh, fire protect our building and we want to make it easy to install this yeah? There are also external um, things that can come to our building, like um, like heavy rain or storm water. Yeah? So we also need to protect uh, the, our building against this storm water. And of course, when we talk about risk management, um, especially now we know we want to have always a view inside of a building. What's the status? What is the condition of our building, the condition of our systems that we can really man manage the risk? Yeah? Because we need buildings that are working 
at the lowest effort. And one thing, of course, we want to control our OPEX and CAPEX. Uh, now with, um, uh, with, with COVID-19, we will definitely see a shift from, from CAPEX to OPEX. So in the upcoming months and years, we will definitely focus on helping our customers uh, to reduce the operation and maintenance costs inside of the building with more efficient products, with systems to improve that, but also with systems to improve maintenance. So this is a, the first main question. Yeah? We have looked inside of the, well, we have looked at the challenges, we have looked inside of the building. Um, very important, we need to look also on the complete life cycle, of course. Yeah? And Xylem is here to, to help uh, along the complete life cycle. So when we start with the planning and design phase, here, I mean, one key word which is jumping into everybody's mind when we talk about digitization is BIM. Yeah? And especially in UK, where we have, I would say, the country in Europe which is most advanced uh, in building this information modeling compared to other countries in Europe. Um, we are helping here with, um, with digital data about our products, which can be easily incorporated to projects, into water utility projects, into industrial projects, but of course also in building projects. Yeah? So we have also selection tools, we have uh, cut sensors to download drawing. To help how to use this equipment, we can offer uh, training, um, trainings, how to uh, do application engineering, how to use, how to select the right product for the right application. Yeah? And of course, next to these tools and these training opportunities, we have also our skilled application engineers, which can help to answer questions during this design phase. So when we talk about future-proof buildings, it starts already in the planning phase. Yeah? And uh, uh, this is, I think, the most important key to partner here. And I think this is also a very important key now, already before COVID, but also now accelerated by COVID. We need all partners that we can trust and help us to solve the challenges. Yeah? And we are here to solve the water challenges with you. So from the planning and design phase, where we have a lot of interfaces to already make buildings effective, to plan buildings in the right way. Uh, we are then coming to the construction and fabrication phase. And uh, we are yeah, having equipment for you. And uh, um, I like to say that uh, a chain is only as strong as the weakest link. Yeah? So that means high quality products, which are reliable, not only efficient, and um, uh, which we can trust are really important to make the, the buildings future proof. Yeah? So it's all about quality uh, for a long lasting time. In the commissioning phase, when everything is prepared, um, we have our two videos online. We have, of course, the, the mandatory IOM instructions, yeah? but also a, a learning center, how to deal with our products. Yeah? And also here we offer additionally hands-on support with our service fleet. Yeah? So this is really important also here. High quality equipment needs to be installed and commissioned inside of a, of a building. And this is not only related to water, it's for all that with high quality partners and with uh, people who know what they are doing. And so we can also future proof the buildings by simply ensuring that the complete supply chain and building up is working in a proper way. Um, during the operation and maintenance phase, where COVID will have now the impact, where the focus will be on. Uh, the lowest OPEX by high efficient products, so also by optimizing systems like maintenance, where we can have alarm services or condition services. Yeah? This is all things that we offer as services to help you uh, and to operate buildings and water buildings more smart in a better way. <clears throat> and also here, of course, we have original spare parts. We have a service fleet who can help you with service and maintenance. And we have also new technologies coming up. So not only products and equipment, we have technologies like alarm services. So you get an alarm when something is not working with the equipment. Um, asset monitoring to see and to allow um, predicting failures already up to six months in advance before a failure happens inside of the system. Yeah? Or HVAC optimization, yeah? very important. Yeah? As we have said before, up to 50% um, energy are required by HVAC systems, but we have high quality products and uh, to be fairly, there were a lot of um, um, others who have high quality products with high efficiency. Yeah? So with efficient products, we can already win a lot, but we can even win more 
if we have HVAC optimization systems, which are optimizing the entire systems and how this is working. Yeah? And here we have my partnership uh, to offer this um, next to the high efficient products, also one level higher in the system hierarchy to optimize the entire system. Yeah, and in the renovation phase, um, when we have said that up to 36% in UK are uh, related to renovation, this will, I think, with COVID, where the CAPEX will be reduced, renovation will run into the focus. So I think this value will increase now. Yeah, um, We can all help with the with the solutions, if, with equipment, with systems, with technology, uh, simply to make your building also future proof. So I think these are all things which are essential. Yeah. And um, before we hand over to Paul, yeah, and um, who, who is looking into the details of the systems and the, the smart technologies, let's take a look on the how is a building needs to be incorporated in a city or in the complete entire water system. Because um, it makes a lot of sense if we have one smart building for us. But if you want to be future proof and you want to be environmental friendly, we need to look at the entire system. So, and here it's really important to look on three different layers. Yeah? We have on the one hand side, on the very left hand side, you see also um, um, challenges which are coming up related to water. We have discussed this already before. But what is our answer to that? Yeah? We have here three different layers. We have intelligent equipment. So intelligent equipment is exactly those equipment which is in touch with water, so which is uh, at the front, uh, solving the issues, yeah? being in touch with water. Here it's very important to have already equipment which is be able to connect, able to adapt its operation to the requirements, yeah? and really also able to connect to the entire interface, because the next layer is the smart network and services. So we need to connect all the smart intelligent equipment to a network. And then the next layer is, of course, advanced state analytics, because if we are able to connect our equipment in touch with water with a network to AI, we are able to use the data to run our systems more effective and more environmental friendly. And we are able to connect buildings to the entire ecosystem of a city with that to ensure uh, affordability, resilience, and accessibility of water. And how does this look like if we look on the map here? Yeah? So, um, when we look here on a, on, a, uh, on a water island or asylum island, if we like to call it like that, and where we can find everywhere intelligent equipment. I have here an example with some of our latest technologies yeah, for intelligent equipment and sensors. We are, uh, we are just coming up with this new smart range of circulators for HVAC systems. We have, for example, also residential metering equipment for buildings inside of smart cities. We have a uh, wastewater systems, intelligence ones, which are uh, ensuring clock-free pumping inside of a building or also in, in, the, in, the, in the wastewater system. So, and, of, and we find also smart monitoring uh, motors and pumps in boosters, which we can be used, of course, in a building to ensure a uh, water supply, but also in, a, in an industrial plant or in the water treatment plants to supply the water. Yeah? And we have also here as an example, adaptive mixers, which have also came up in the last months, which are smart products uh, in the water treatment plant. So overall, you see here, we are taking care that we can connect, but that we have intelligent equipment and sensors in the different water applications from, this, from the building, in the city to the treatment plant in the overall life cycle. Looking on the next layer, we have here also um, services to connect this. Yeah? So we have um, tools to connect it, to see a map where, where's which equipment, to uh, manage the assets and to optimize the services. So you exactly know when to service which pump. You have this in overview. There's also an uh, opportunity for remote monitoring to always um, uh, observe what's going on in the field. So this is our this is our smart network services and they are, can connect via cloud systems uh, and collect all the information from inside of the building up to a treatment plant and connect the entire system. 
Yeah, and on the top of that, we need, of course, to use the data that we are collecting. Uh, here are also two examples of advanced data analytic, al analytics, which are in the in the water supply network where we can detect and um, uh, assess the condition of the pipes or where we have also decision equipment to support um, smart uh, wastewater transport systems. Yeah? So this is the, the last layer where we have to go to. This is the definitely the future, not only of smart buildings, but of smart water, yeah? intelligent equipment, connecting that, analyzing the data and making the right things out of that. And having this said, I like to hand over to Paul and no, I don't like to hand over to Paul because I missed before something, yeah? uh, because uh, I, I can go back. I missed, uh, I wanted to ask you some questions and I simply forget that I apologize for that. Yeah? Because here on the future proof building, we talked about um, planning and design. We talked about digitalization. We talked about BIM and I like to run quickly some polls and to get your feedback about BIM. And Rebecca, can you help us to run these polls now? So now. So we have two polls, yeah. And uh, the first one is how often are you using BIM for your building specifications? So at the very first beginning, when you specify, do you have BIM mandated in your specification? Is it required? And the second one. Do you believe there's an element of untapped potential with regards to BIM and the water sector? Just speaking about BIM, we are really heavily investing here, yeah, and we in the moment have uh, investing in our planning and design uh, opportunities, how we can help you. We are getting more and more people, uh, more and more products digital available. And of course, we know uh, talking about BIM is not about the 3D file or non graphical data. Building information modeling is, of course, a, an entire approach to manage digital data across the life cycle. And uh, I'm really interested in how you see that. And I kindly ask you to, to, to run this poll. Yeah? We, I saw we have already some answers. Yeah? So maybe um, the last reminder. So please do it now. And uh, I will, in the meanwhile, hand over to Paul. And we can continue the presentations to look inside of the silent building service solutions and into these four different water systems inside of a building. Yeah? And Paul, the stage is yours. Thanks, Carl. Um, so just following on from um, Carl's introduction, so looking at how do we maintain uh, efficient and continuous supply um, of water for buildings and properties uh, at the right pressure, um, so I suppose the main thing is is looking at around um, once we come out of the municipal network, looking at residential and commercial booster systems. Um, most commercial and residential booster systems these days have moved away from fixed speed to variable speed applications. Um, looking where we have obviously uh, constant pressure requirements at varying demand. So where we're looking for um, various different, um, hugely different uh, fluctuations in demand, it's better now to go for a variable speed drive system where we'll use um, best in class efficiency pumps running at their peak efficiency, um, but with utilization of variable speed drive means that the pump will only run and the booster will only run at the required flow uh, and pressure for the demand at any given time. That also gives us um, a lot more built-in reliability for the boosters these days as well, um, because the pumps are not running in anger. They will come in on a soft start uh, scenario rather than being pressure switch controlled, which would generally um, give water hammer and lots of problems um, downstream of the system. Um, also to ensure that where we have the certification or the clean water pumping technology and, and pump equipment, is RAS approved uh, to make sure that it meets the drinking water standards. Um, and most of the most of the pumps, if you look at the vertical multi-stage pumps and um, you bore holes in the scubas, have best in class efficiency. So when we couple that with uh, the variable speed drives and moving on to permanent magnet motors, um, that kind of future proofs the buildings and the installations as well to make sure um, that we are 
uh, installing the most efficient products um, as new installations and upgrades, and we optimize systems to make sure that they are running at their peak performance. And then moving into kind of more of the sort of latest developments in, in technology onto Xylem's recent acquisitions, going into flow meters and heat meters. So builds a lot more intelligence into the building. So we can now monitor, uh, remotely monitor, capture, uh, give building owners, landlords, etc., data on how much water is being used by a particular apartment in a block of flats or an office. Um, so the flow meters, the census flow meters that, that we're now able to supply uh, can either be um, drive by, walk by red or actually read over the network. So these can be remotely monitored um, so people can get a lot more intelligence uh, today around what is happening within within the buildings. Um, and then within when we go on to drives, monitoring and control systems, uh, whilst variable speed technology has been around for, for a long time now, now we're starting to couple that, as I say, with permanent magnet motors, uh, remote condition monitoring. We're able to uh, install equipment within the control panels of the booster sets now with the variable speed drives where we can remotely monitor uh, what is happening with the pump system. So a landlord or a building maintenance company these days can actually have um, people either sat at home or in a, in a call centre, uh, actually monitoring the assets remotely. Uh, so reducing the need for people to um, continually be on site, looking at assets, managing those asset, assets. This can now be done um, from a remote distance, as I say, even by somebody just sat in their own lounge watching TV on an iPad or a PC, uh, can actually look and see what their booster set or their heating pump is, is doing these days. Uh, and as kind of water security is becoming a lot more commonplace, water scarcity, I'd say one thing is that uh, some of the water companies in the UK and the water supply organisations across Europe are seeing as a result of the COVID situation is that water usage has actually increased. Um, so a lot of people these days are looking at alternative methods for water supply. There's a lot more investment being put into rainwater harvesting. So using our, our Redico and, uh, and sanitaire ozone and, and UV treatment systems uh, as alternative uh, water sources to maintain the water security in a building, um, kind of manage Legionella control, things like that. So water disinfection, uh, ensuring that that is to the highest quality is really becoming at the forefront um, of building control now as well, rather than just relying 100% on the municipality. A lot more companies having stored water uh, in buildings, having standalone pumped uh, booster set systems. So water quality is, is becoming quite paramount uh, as water scarcity becomes more, more of a day-to-day -day problem. So if we look at some kind of live examples of the technologies that, that Xylem uh, have implemented around the world, um, large, current largest um, high rise building in the world is the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Um, Xylem were, were chosen uh, back in 2010 when the building was being constructed to supply uh, all of the water booster pumps um, fitted with the Hydrobar variable speed for, for this package. So in total, there were um, six water transfer sets and seven Luara water booster sets uh, provided for this system, supplying an average of just under a million litres of water per day at the lowage energy cost. So there was a significant amount of work done up front to ensure that um, the booster sets that were being installed in this application met the highest standards and had the best, best in class efficiency. So it's quite a significant uh, project which which Xylem were were involved were involved in uh, back in 2010. So moving on, so looking then at our indoor climate, uh, and again, as more and more people are now working from home, there's been a lot of publicity in the press recently, obviously since COVID, um, of having three four thousand people sat in a high rise office block staring at PCs is probably a thing of the past. So more and more people today are working from home and probably will continue uh, to work from home as we go forward. We need to ensure that we have the correct um, HVAC systems, that we're optimizing our HVAC systems 
in the correct way that they're running at the most efficient uh, points that we can. So to that end, we have a full range of high efficiency circulators. We're about to launch the next generation residential circulator, which has best in class um, EI index efficiency. And again, looking at the pumps in a heating system to ensure that they are running at their, their peak efficiency. Um, many older pumps are still installed in office blocks, hotels, residential properties, uh, which are today still inefficient, uh, not meeting the latest legislation. So we can um, have lots of um, projects and engineers kind of looking at optimizing these systems to make sure that they are running at the most efficient uh, ways that they can uh, and that we don't have kind of pumps sat there redundant or, or just ticking over because there are leaks in the system. And again, coming back to the treatment systems, um, looking at our, our UV and ozone treatment packages to ensure that we are disinfecting water in these systems to keep bacteria to a, to a minimum and linked with our uh, plate and frame heat exchanger packages, we, we can now work more towards large bespoke projects where we're looking at data centers, um, large district heating plants, et cetera. So we can cover the full spectrum of the fluid technology requirements uh, within these large district heating and cooling uh, schemes. Linked to that, um, moving on to our census thermal energy meters, our heat meters, as we're looking at heat interface units. Um, again, more kind of district heating schemes are coming online. Um, there's a lot of investment across Europe and starting to come more into the UK around district heating. Um, we can supply flow meters and heat meters um, with these schemes to ensure that um, the data can be captured remotely uh, through the airways via telemetry and landlords, property owners can have um, good control over what's actually going on in a prop property. Um, linked with all the monitoring and control systems and services that, that Xylem offer, um, there, there's a significant project package that we can put together with regards to optimizing HVAC systems to ensure that they are operating at their peak performance um, and make sure that systems are, are running as efficiently as they can be. Um, again, looking at start some large significant applications, um, we, we did a job recently, a large um, new build hospital in Portugal, where we worked very closely with the project engineers on site to ensure that we had the highest efficiency pumps and drives uh, for the clean water uh, pumping within the building services of the hospital, giving energy savings up to around 70%. Um, we also then managed to work with the customer to ensure that we were installing clog-free uh, flight pumping technology uh, for the wastewater. As you can imagine, uh, significant wastewater challenges associated uh, with a hospital type application. So we were able to put together a full bespoke package for both the clean and the wastewater uh, pumping requirements on this system and give the customer a full peace of mind that their, their full end-to-end -end water cycle uh, was actually covered by very high efficient solutions uh, with a strong backup customer service and optimized systems to ensure that the life cycle of the full system uh, would, would meet the, the higher standards that the client was requiring. So if we then look at the demand of increased wastewater uh, disposal, so as we see more demand um, for water usage, uh, there's obviously a lot more demand for the disposal of the wastewater uh, and the stormwater. So we've, we've launched a number of uh, new products in, in recent years. Um, kind of top of the list at the moment is the Xylem's a uh, unique concerted product, uh, reducing system cleaning costs by up to 80% and energy costs up to 70%. Um, due to the unique design of the concerted as well, it also reduces the significant amount of pumps required to cover the same level of, of duty requirements. So from a spares handling point of view, an optimization point of view, the pump can learn very quickly um, the, the kind of conditions of the system and adapt itself. Um, we've managed to reduce the number of models from a traditional wastewater pump from about 100 models down to around about 10 
different models covering the same operating window. Um, looking at our residential commercial wastewater pumps and pump stations, um, we're now offering a full plug and play uh, residential commercial systems, which are ready for uh, immediate installation and connection to either a private or municipal supply. And again, with the monitoring and control systems, these can be remotely monitored um, by various BMS or SCADA systems. And again, we have um, a monitoring and control team which can actually look at these systems, monitor them for yourself and your clients remotely, again, to save having call centers where people are kind of looking at screens and looking at all these assets. So these assets can now be uh, very efficiently remotely monitored. Uh, via call centers and, and via uh, teams of engineers um, based anywhere in the globe, doesn't have to be uh, specifically in the UK, but they could be monitored 24 seven to ensure that systems are operating efficiently. And if there is a failure in a system, then we can get engineers to site in a timely manner, um, quite often before the client actually realizes that they did have a problem within their wastewater uh, package station. So again, looking at a um, uh, uh, live installation of best practice on the Concerta, um, we were presented with a particular challenge uh, by Heathrow Airport, one of the biggest airports in the world. They had significant problems um, with the pumps in their pump stations clogging, um, blocking through varying different um, solids, non-biological solids, including plastic material, wet wipes, nappies, uh, clothing, and so all sorts of unusual things that you wouldn't generally anticipate to get to find in a package pump station. However, they had significant costs uh, of tankering uh, with the pump stations clogging. So we installed the Concerta, um, kind of the, the unique, uh, first intelligent uh, integrated uh, wastewater pumps within the system. And this is able to tackle um, the problems in the sump. It's been able to learn uh, the characteristics of the sump through the technology in the brain that's actually built within the Concerta product um, and has actually managed to reduce the tankering costs of the sump. And to date, there's actually been no blockages in this sump. It's, uh, the Concerta has actually been in place um, for quite a significant amount of time on the Heathrow Airport site. And they've actually now standardized uh, on the Concerta across all of their uh, pumping stations right across the whole airport facility. So it's managed to give them clog-free pumping. They've had no emergency call-outs. Uh, their tankering costs have reduced to almost zero. They've seen a 53% reduction in energy consumption. Uh, they've also seen a significant reduction in the footprint of the control cabinets and control equipment that's now needed to run these sumps. Uh, as you can imagine, somebody somewhere like Heathrow Airport, space is at a premium. So by being able to reduce the size of the control equipment, that's meant that they can have room for other, other equipment um, to work alongside these packages. Um, so there's now been a huge reduction in reduced cleaning and servicing costs as well. So all in all, they've seen around about 80% reduction in their running costs uh, from a wastewater perspective right across the site. So this has been a significant, um, excellent install for the Concerta product. And since we've had um, this, these sites across Heathrow Airport, there's been many other problematic sites right up and down the country, lots of care homes where you can imagine uh, there are specific problems with blockage of pumps where we've managed to install the Concerta uh, product, particularly in a lot of county council installations, and it's completely removed the additional costs of tankering um, for these clients going forward. So if anybody does have any specific customers or clients that have problem sites with blockage of wastewater pumps, then I'd encourage you to get in touch with us and we can have a look at possibly solving the problem using our concerted product going forward. Um, then moving on to uh, fire protection systems, we're starting to see a bit of a shift uh, in the UK market, although there is the European Harmonised Standard, um, the SEN 12845 um, for fire sets in, in Europe. 
Um, there are also LPC rules attached to that, but we're starting to see a shift as well where um, people are still, consultants, contractors are starting to integrate the fire sprinkler system with the building uh, booster set as well. Um, so what we're starting to see a steady increase in is booster sets being oversized, having additional pumps to actually accommodate the fire package as well. Um, we do manufacture booster sets with both electrical and diesel driven, driven uh, pumps on them to the European 12845 standard. We also have a range of residential booster sets to meet the 9521 UK standard for residential fire packages as well, as well as NFPA certified for US um, style applications. Um, we also have our ESV, the multi-stage pump, which we use a lot in the jockey pump applications. Again, with best in class efficiency, uh, we've had installations as well where we've come with clients with because of the inherent design of a jockey pump traditionally would always be used on a pressure switch control where because of the high pressures involved in keeping the fire ring main pressurized, um, you can have significant water damage, ha hammer damage when the pump comes online. So we have also retrofitted our hydrobar variable speed drive to a number of jockey pumps uh, to maintain the pressure within the system, but also to reduce that damage from the significant water hammer that can happen in these applications. Um, so again, that, that's a significant development uh, that's happened over the recent years to make these systems a lot more reliable. Um, going on to, to again, another um, solution where Xylem has actually been involved and done a full back-to-back -back solution. Um, this is looking at a four-star four hotel um, Congress and Hotel Spa that we, we recently supplied, uh, where we supplied all the end suction pumps um, for uh, the water supply booster sets with integrated Wedeco UV disinfection um, to give a capacity up to 400 cubic meters an hour for the water supply and pressure boosting around the property. We we're also able to supply all of the fire protection equipment, um, both electrical and diesel fire sprinkler systems um, to the specification. And all the HVAC systems as well were delivered by our stainless steel circulation pumps. So again, um, Xylem is able to offer the full building service solution. And then on top of that, obviously, once we've supplied all the clean water pumping and fire protection, uh, we can look at the wastewater pumping applications as well going forward. So I think um, that's kind of just gives you an idea of, of where Xylem is going with the new technologies and the up-to-date um, kind of products and, and technological advances that we have coming into the market. Um, let's say thank everybody for attending today and for their attention. I don't know. Uh, Rebecca, whether we have any questions come in? And we have some. I'd just like to thank you and Carl for those insightful presentations, very fitting of what's going on right now and designing and planning for buildings of the future. Um, and it's been great to see a couple of case studies as well. So thank you, Paul. Um, I'll just move on to some questions. We've had quite a few come through. So um, the first one we have is actually for you, Paul. Um, so I'll pop it up here so you can read it. Um, in your opinion, would you, sorry, in your, in your opinion, what would you say is the most significant digital innovation that's transformed the water sector? So, yeah, thanks, Rebecca. I think there's a couple of things here. I suppose the, the most recent digital innovation has been around um, the energy optimization and remote asset uh, monitoring. Um, as a lot more engineers, um, traditionally there'd have been a lot more on-site engineers. Um, as a lot of um, systems these days are not regularly checked and maintained, um, the digitization of flow meters, remote monitoring, etc., moving on from condition monitoring has meant that more landlords, property owners, um, large chain companies where they would generally just have one central um, communications area are able to remote all of their assets um, from one central place now or even from a laptop at their home. Um, so when you link that into 
things such as flow meters, uh, heat meters, et cetera. The digitization of being able to get this information directly from the system or, or the machine means that people can react a lot quicker to a failure. So quite often, if you look at a booster set as an example, supplying a, a tower block, um, engineers can be on site to repair a failed pump um, before anybody's even noticed these days that there has been a drop in system pressure. So whereas in the past, probably four or five years ago, it would have waited until somebody within the apartment block reported a drop in pressure, um, that they had no water, then they would have to wait for an engineer to attend site. Quite often these days, the problem will have been solved uh, without anybody even noting, noticing that there has been a problem because we have the digital information um, to maintain these assets remotely. It's only going to get better. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> questions but if any if you have any any questions you'd like to ask it's not too late so please type them into the sidebar to the right um so let me move on to i've got one for carl here um so carl in the wake of coronavirus have you noticed a sea change amongst the architectural community with regards to water sustainability for building specifications Carl, have you got your um, mic on? You might have to start again. Sorry. Very welcome, you. Um, yeah, I would say um, there will be changes. Yeah, and I think uh, it, it has started to change. Yeah, I, I see discussions are changing. Uh, we, we have discussed this also in the trends before. There is definitely a need to make um, um, the business more effective. Yeah, to um, to make all the processes more effective in the entire supply chain. So how do we uh, exchange data? How do we even purchase a product? Yeah, so all of this will get more efficient and will use the digital um, data. Yeah? And uh, we have asked the poll for BIM because it's also really interesting. Yeah? And uh, looking on the results, we see that today mm, only few people are using uh, BIM regularly. But um, uh, on, the, on the second poll, that there is a, something in for the future, more or less everybody's agreeing that BIM is a kind of future which will help to make or which will impact the building service business. So I would say what is definitely coming and will impact the specifications is related to uh, the data exchange. So how data will be exchanged from the manufacturer over the distributor, over the architect, finally to the facility manager or, or, the, or operator of buildings. So I think this will be one of the keys uh, where we will see a simplification and optimization over the complete supply process. It starts with BIM, but this is all a, a journey about digital data management. And I think that this will be the biggest impact from COVID. Yeah. Oh. Um, I think we have a couple more. Paul, I have one for you. So, um, what issues will we eventually encounter if we don't adopt digitalization within the industry? So, that one's for Paul. Yeah, that's a great, great question. I think if we don't adopt more digitization within the industry, um, as we see a lot more, the water companies are now talking around water scarcity. Uh, as I said earlier in the presentation, with more and more people working from home, um, a lot more kind of people working flexible hours, the water usage has gone up significantly. So if we don't kind of adopt the digitalization, we will find that the continuing trend of water scarcity continues um, and will cause us significant problems as a society going forward. I think also, because um, the way COVID has changed things as well, big call centers, people kind of answering phones with, with, with problems is probably not going to happen as, as quick and efficiently as it has in the past. The large call centers looking at asset management um, uh, 
is going to be a lot uh, kind of impacted through the things like COVID. So I think what we will find is the industry will be forced to accept more digitalization going forward as more and more people are now smart working. So the digitization will force people to actually not be on site, to be working from home from more, more often. So they will have to adapt to this new way of having this information at their fingertips. So if we don't accept and move on and, and accelerate the digitization of the water industry and the building services industry, people being able to monitor the assets and control the assets um, remotely whilst they're working from home will be a lot more difficult and we will have more challenges around optimizing our systems and keeping our systems running at peak efficiency if we don't adopt it going forward. Um, and I now have a question for Carl. So, Carl, do you believe that the changes COVID-19 has presented to the water industry are here to stay? Yeah, I, I, I think um, I think there are, when we look at our overall economy, I think uh, there will be a lot of lessons that we learn, they will definitely stay. Um, there's, we had this push of uh, digitalization that um, just Paul answered to, and I think um, COVID-19 has accelerated the digitalization more than a, a CEO or any other people in the industry have, would have done this. Yeah? And I think this digitalization trend and this acceleration of it is here to stay. Yeah. I think also taking more care of water, um, talking about scarcity, connecting systems. Yeah? As Paul said before, we need to, and we have shown in one of the slides, we need to connect the different systems inside of a building to the overall network. Yeah? So connectivity, looking on the entire management, this is things that that were on the agenda, but I think with COVID it showed definitely the need, and this is something that will stay. Yeah? So I think we have simply a different picture, and um, our priorities have been now, uh, I would say, clearly selected. Uh, what we need to take care for in the water sector. Excellent. Thank you very much, Carl. I think we have time for maybe a couple more questions. Um, we have a couple of product-based questions, actually. So I'll read them out, and Paul and Carl, you can just jump in um, wherever you feel necessary. So um, we have one asking, is the new EMP pump available in Super Duplex yet? Yeah, yeah, I'll pass it. Because before before I joined um, as a market manager for building services, I was the product manager for the EMP, so I can easily answer that. Um, so super duplex is uh, available on request for the EMP. Uh, we need this definitely for desalination plants, um, especially in regions where we have a high water temperature and a high salt content inside of the water. We do not have super duplex in stock because it makes no sense but it needs to be available on request and then know that we have already quoted pumps and also delivered pumps in super duplex. One more. Again, Paul or Carl, jump in whenever you feel necessary. Um, so how do we market smart water solutions in emerging markets known to be late adopters of technologies? So I think I think going forward, this is this is kind of one of those big challenges that we face. Um, so what we are what we are trying to do is use the best practices that we have been involved in across um, the Europe and the US, um, writing many white papers and using those as a catalyst to promote these technologies um, in those emerging markets. So the emerging market is always a big challenge and the last um, adopters of kind of new technologies, um, but we're using our experience of existing installations um, and kind of looking at the challenges that we have faced in, in implementing in the early adopter um, countries and taking the best practices from those um, applications and installations and projects and using those as best practices to promote into the emerging markets.
Oh, well, I think we're actually drawing to a close now. So um, I hope you found that very useful and informative. If you do have any questions that you think of after the session, then you can contact Carl and Wolf. Their contact details are on the right hand side. So um, just copy and paste them into your emails. Um, also, it's worth adding that this presentation will, is, has been recorded, so it will be available on Xylem's website, Future Construction Architects website, and Public Sector Builds Public Sector Build Journal's website and social pages. So you'll be able to watch it back again. And if you watch back again and think of any questions, then do get in contact with Carl or, or Paul. Um, I'd like to speak, thank our speakers, Carl and Paul, um, for imparting their knowledge and sharing some case studies and yeah just giving us a, an update on the water industry um, and i'd like to thank our audience for taking the time out of their day because i know everyone's a bit hectic at the moment so it's really made for an interesting discussion and um, thank you everyone goodbye thank you